Welcome to Waltrip Unfiltered. We've got a great show coming to you today. Noah Gregson, the driver of Dale Jr.'s number nine Chevy in the Xfinity Series, is going to be with us. We're going to talk to Noah about his career and the start to the 2019 season. And I want to give a shout out right now to NASCAR. Single car qualifying worked. It was awesome. The show was great on TV, too. We took TV timeouts. You didn't miss a single car. They would take a break. We'd show some commercials. No one would be on the trap. Come back. You get to see the guys battle. And that reminded me, that session reminded me, of one of my favorite qualifying sessions ever. And it happened at Dover in 2012 when Jimmy Johnson was on the provisional pole with one guy left to go. And that one guy, 51, 6, I don't know how old guy, Mark Martin. And he takes the Michael Waltrip Racing Aaron's Toyota onto the track, last car out, beats Jimmy Johnson, and gets the pole. That was dramatic. I love that. And what we saw in Dover was fun to watch. (laughs) And you know what else was really fun to watch? The race at Dover. Congratulations to Martin Truex Jr. He and Cole Pern picking up their second win of 2019 for Joe Gibbs Racing. That car was hooked up. He started last along with Alex Bowman, and they finished 1-2. I know it's hard to pass, but when you start last and you finish first, yeah, you passed everybody. So stay tuned. We'll be right back, and we'll talk to Noah. Green play, green play. Awesome that you came by, Noah Gregson. Thank you so much for joining me here on Waltrip Unfiltered in our plush Fox Sports studios. Thanks for visiting. Thanks for having me. I like it. I was looking at your helmet collection. Pretty cool. Yeah, if, you, uh, if you're if you listening to us on the podcast, you ought to watch some of our videos because I've got helmets represented from like 1988 all the way to the present, and then some of my buddies have signed helmets and have added them to my collection, so uh, it's kind of cool. Tell, tell me about your day. How you been? What's going on? Uh, I've been a little tired. and uh, Dover will do that to yeah, you. Yeah, I've been, been a little worn out. Watched the cup race. I was at the wind tunnel with my crew chief earlier up in Mooresville, and then went to the shop, talked to the guys, and then came down here to see you. Um, your crew chief, Dave Ellens, obviously very successful crew chief. I, I find that interesting you were at the wind tunnel with him. Is that just more ways for you to learn sooner, talking about aero and, and just feeding off him and, and just trying to understand everything he thinks as he's preparing a race car? Yeah, I think any time spending spending time with the crew chief is is valuable. And first year, I've I've only spent maybe ten races with him, nine or ten races with him. And so um, I just met him at the beginning of this year. So we're we're only a couple months into this deal. So any t- chance I can get to spend with him is is definitely very valuable. So I uh, I went over there to see him and kind of learned what they were doing. I've been over um, when we were racing trucks over to the wind tunnel, but wanted to learn more about the cars and and so we had our charlotte car over there just checking it out and seeing everything that that was going on so um learned some stuff and kind of pointed some stuff out on um what i thought we needed to be better and he kind of explained some stuff from our car this past week on on um just stuff i was feeling from from that so it was cool just to uh to be able to sit down with him and kind of digest everything yeah i ran into you at dover and and talked for a bit and uh, you said practice didn't go great. Uh, you, you were going to make some changes, and I know you have some some awesome teammates, Celine on, and of course your experienced crew chief. Uh, how is that for a young racer? I mean, you started uh, Xfinity last year and ran a couple races and did awesome. Um, and and I guess I need to backtrack a bit. You started racing like four years ago and won your first K and N race, I guess, or late model race four years ago fast forward to the trucks and now to Xfinity and you've wanted everything you've always done. And it's been like, everything's good, but this year you start out and you have those moments like you had at Dover where you say, you know, it just, just doesn't feel right. Um, how challenging is that? And how are you, how are you processing it? It's, it's, gets frustrating sometimes. And, um, from the driver standpoint, it's, you only really have one shot to make it. And so you kind of put all your, your eggs in one basket. And so, Racing with with Junior Motorsports this year, it's it's been great. Just being over at the shop and in the atmosphere over there is is second to none. I love it for myself personally. I'm more outgoing and um, probably more in out in left field than most people are. Uh, I'm Welcome pretty wild, world. you know. So yeah, obviously <laughs> I, I I get it and I love it. Yeah. But we'll get into that in a bit. So but. I don't know. I feel like just 
just being over there. It gets kind of frustrating this past weekend at Dover, but um, I felt like I I did a good job just trying to keep my head on straight throughout the weekend and not, I don't know, I was, I was kind of discouraged after practice and didn't really know what to think on what I needed. I was, I was pretty bummed out, and I just uh, slept on it that night and, and it came to the racetrack again with a good attitude and um, we qualified ninth, which I was disappointed about, but then we had to we had to make an unapproved adjustment with the track bar in the rear. We had to uh, to fix something there, so that set us back, and we had to start in the back of the pack. And really, just my main goal was just to try and try and keep the car safe and just try and pick them off one by one, one at a time. And felt like I managed the race really well, and I had good feedback. And then um, just to compound on the situation, we had a loose right front wheel on the last pit stop when we were running sixth, and it's just just kind of made it frustrating. So just everything kind of snowballed throughout the weekend. But I don't know. You, there's more opportunity here in the future, but I just hope by the end of the year I don't look back and I feel like we say there's always next weekend, but you keep saying that and then you finally run out of next weekend, you know. So. I don't know. It's uh, we're working hard as a team. I'm I'm doing the best job I can do, and, and just trying to learn every opportunity I get just to to get better. Well, it sounds like it's a perfect time for a bit of a break. You got a couple of weeks to uh, to get ready to go over to Charlotte. You talked about being at the wind tunnel with your Charlotte car. I I know that you'll be you were refreshed when you woke up Saturday morning after a rough Friday. So I know you'll be. Uh, totally prepared and ready to go when it comes time to to race at Charlotte. Is that a track that you you enjoy? I kind of I don't know. I I ran decent there in the truck last year, and um, we ran in the top three, led some laps there, and then on the final restart, I was actually showing one of my crew guys. They're asking me what I thought about Charlotte. I'm like, man, like like I about won it last year in the truck deal, but um, I lined up on the inside of the front row. I think. Johnny Sauter was to my outside, and, and Kyle Busch was right behind me. And right when uh, Johnny took off, I spun my tires just a tick, and then Kyle came with a push, and he hit me in the in the back part of the right side of the back bumper, and it kind of turned me, like, almost head on into the inside grass. Yeah. And then I kind of collected it, but it was, like, green-white checkered, and they all went by me. I think I finished 10th, but is I don't know. I'm decent there. I don't know what it's going to be like in a car because the trucks, I feel like, drive so much differently than – than how the cars do, but you know, we'll see. But when you ran Richmond, and I thought you were going to win, and, and you talk about the fact that the trucks drive so much different than the cars. I've had the the luxury of being able to drive both. I, I love driving both, but certainly takes a different style. So Charlotte will be fun for you to to see how how the cars act and what what it's going to take to be successful there. Yeah, they definitely you definitely have to have a different driving style, I think, and. More so on the mile and a half. So I feel like short tracks, it's it's just all mechanical grip, and you just it's the chassis and the tires and your four shocks and springs, and and you go. It doesn't really matter what vehicle you're in. Um, but mile and a half, I've noticed a lot a lot of difference, and really having to change up my driving style. And and I really like driving the cars. I feel like they're just kind of on top of the racetrack, kind of just just skating around, and you don't have a lot of downforce or side force to rely on, unlike the trucks. So. I always tell people they say what do you like driving better a, a car or a truck and I'm like man like the, the biggest difference I'd say is the truck they're really stuck into the racetrack and they have a lot of downforce and side force and they're really really easy to drive by yourself but then you get in traffic oh they're and a mess they punch such a big hole in the air and it just your balance is completely different and so the cars they're a handful to drive by yourselves but they don't really change a lot in traffic um to the extent as, as what a truck does. So I like driving the cars in traffic, but I like driving the <laughs> trucks by themselves because you're just pedal to the metal, just getting all she can get. Hammer down. And you were uh, a year ago at Kansas, you were the man. That was a great performance, uh, your second truck victory. You got that big win at Martinsville that I don't know how many people have replayed your post-race celebration or whatever you call that. Yeah. I don't know. It might have looked like a post if I was old enough a post race or celebration from the maybe later that night from the hangover was, yeah but yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't know anything about that I'm yeah. not old enough yet no. but 20 yeah I got out with my helmet on and I, mean, I just beat Matt Crafton and Johnny Sauter they're like two of the best guys out there you know ever and then on, so, in the trucks and I passed Matt on the outside and took yeah. the lead and drove away and then to do it at Martinsville and all the history there 
it was just it was really special and so I'm like man like we've come close to winning a couple so far that year but just just never did and you always get the question on hey when's that first one coming and and whatnot and so I'm like man I'm, I'm gonna do a, a good burnout here so I did too long of a burnout I did like a five minute long burnout it felt like forever but I'm like screw it I'm gonna try and blow the tires off of this thing and try and catch it on fire and <laughs> do whatever I can do do the biggest burnout I can and then so I did that and then I went to uh got out still with my helmet on I'm all hot I'm worn out I climb up the fence and I'm pumping up the crowd doing a pull up and I get down and that's when the adrenaline wore off and it finally hit me I'm like oh man like this ain't good like I feel like I'm about to throw up right and then I, it, luckily it was just water that because yeah. I drank a, a sip of water before the second to last restart I think it was and then it I threw up the water just because I was so worn out but, yeah yeah well it, it was a great emotional celebration and you showed a lot of athleticism climbing that fence and doing those pull-ups I was I, I wanted to talk about that forever and and uh it's all it'll always be hooked to you throwing up but that's just leaving it all that's putting it all on the field right that's right that's right. And another moment uh, that I love of your victory celebration was when you won the Snowball Derby. And first of all, congratulations on being a Snowball Derby champion. Thank you. That, that, that's quite an honor. My brother won that race back when I was mm -hmm. a kid, and, and I never got to race in it. But it was always one, and come December, I'm going to see what's happening down in Pensacola. And you went down there and won that. That had to feel great. It was it, it was really good feeling. I mean, one, it's a Snowball Derby, but two – I've run that race the past the past three years, and I, I really struggled. And so, um, 2017, I ran it with with KBM, and I felt like we were we were fast, but for the first 30 laps, I'd say of a run. But then after that, you have to start backing up your corner, and that place is really rough and abrasive and worn out on the tires, so you're slipping and sliding the whole time. And I could just never really figure that track out, so I, I really struggled there. And then we went down there during September of 2018 and ran the late model for a blizzard race. It was like 125, 150 lap race. And I remember us being fast again for the first 30 laps, but then it would, it would give up. And so coming back that night after that race, I, I really thought about what I needed differently in my car and, and what was going to help me from, from lap 30 to 60 or lap 30 to 75 on a run because they have the pit stops and everything at the Derby and, um, we went down to that blizzard race to get some practice and kind of freshen up around that track and get a good setup. So um, I just had the mindset of, of getting around there and, and not having to use the brake pedal and keep the front bump, bump stops loaded up um, when, I'm, when I'm off the brake pedal because um, I feel like I drive it in really hard and really deep. And then as the run goes on, I have to back my corner up and then get off the brake pedal because I'm over slowing the car at that point right. and then it's the front tires I'm just tight at that point so um, I just I focused on in practice just doing I think we did three 45 lap runs in practice and we're like 22nd 27th and like 19th on the board in the three practice sessions and everyone's p51 all of those guys were all writing us off and everything I'm like no like I'm just telling my crew chief Marcus Richmond I mean, he, he did a good job making good adjustments all weekend, too, in, in that team. And so I just kept on telling him, it's going to pay off. Just trust me. And so we get out there for the race, and we were a top five car in the race and, and then had really good pit stops there at the end and um, set us up for contention to, to be leading there at the end. And um, what well, the last six laps after that restart and, and then took home the trophy, and it was a good time. Yeah, it was a it was a beautiful thing seeing you win that race. And, and Victory Lane, you had to be pumped up. You talked about your adrenaline in Martinsville. It had to be the same collecting the Snowball Derby trophy. And, heck, you just went for it. Trophy Queen was there. And you're going to give her a kiss, right? I know. So they uh, they interview you before the race. And I'm like, man, there's so much history down here yeah. with, with that race and everything. I'm like, so they, they interview me right in driver intros and, um, the whole stands can hear it. it's on the PA system and I'm like he asked me some question and, and I don't know how I got to it but I'm like man if, if I win this race I mean you get the three best things in life when you win this race you get the you get the trophy you get the big check and you get to take home the pretty girl or you get to kiss the pretty girl or something like that and not knowing I was going to win the race later yeah I'm just like man you get you get some good deals out of this so <laughs> um, I ended up going in for the kiss and she didn't know I was going in for the kiss, so she kind of backed away. And then I'm like, no, I just I just won. Like, 
that's part of the deal. Like you kissed the trophy girl like back in the day, and so she leaned in and kissed me, and then she we were in tech inspection afterwards. Like an hour later, she comes walking up, and I'm like standing there, I'm like, oh man, like I don't know if she's like mad or what the deal is, because I just got rejected, and then come find out that it's all on Twitter and everything, and and people are actually mad at me. She actually came up to me like an hour later, and she's like, hey, you're gonna kiss me, but not introduce yourself to me. And I'm like, oh, well, hello, I'm Noah, nice to meet you. And then um, started texting, and I actually took her to the banquet as my date Yes. later that next weekend. So uh, it was good. Everyone loved it. Well, it I loved it, and I I just remember watching you know race car drivers win back in the 70s and 80s, and you always kiss the trophy queen, so I don't see anything inappropriate about that. And you were very respectful. And obviously, she appreciated that, and uh, y'all went on a date or two. That's right. That's right. Can't awesome. complain. So, like I said, we, we started racing as a kid in bandoleros, go-karts. We all, you know, all of us kind of do that same thing. Mm-hmm. And then when you got in a, in a late model Canyon car, you won there. You get to the trucks. You, you, you win in the trucks. Some great performances. And, and – you have to be in a position as a as a young racer like this is smooth. Everything is going exactly like I want it to, and you start 2019 with this opportunity that you've earned to drive for Dale Jr. because of what you've been able to accomplish on the racetrack, and you've got a you got a break here. Ten races in, you've had some great performances. The cars ran well. I'm sure, you haven't accomplished everything you hoped to in those ten races. You get a reset. Is, is this one of those moments in your young life where you're like, you, you said it a minute ago, I love that. You said, you know, I, don't, I might only get one chance at this. Is, that, is there been some reflecting or soul searching or where are you right now as you get ready to, to, to have a couple of days off? I mean, I definitely, definitely think about just kind of all the, the mental aspects. I mean, I'm sure you have it. I'm sure every race car driver has it some point in the career where they're like man am I really meant to do this am I good enough to do this and there's just whatever reason it is there's something in you that just keeps on coming back and and you keep wanting more and I mean every race car driver personally to themselves they they know they can do it deep down and they think they can do it and they have the full confidence in their self and I, I think that's why I keep on coming back and and keep on doing it obviously I have great support from from some good sponsors and I have good support from the guys at junior motorsports and everyone's working together, but it's, it's challenging during those hard times. And we're kind of going through one of those valleys. You have your peaks and valleys and you just, you just got to ride the wave and, and just keep on going. You can't, you can't get too high and you can't get too low. You just have to kind of find your middle. And, and luckily I have some good people around me um, that I really lean on that, I talk to um, all the time. One guy that comes to mind is Brandon, McR- Brandon McReynolds, Larry McReynolds' son. I've been working with him for the past couple of years, and um, he started out as my spotter back in the K&N days, and he's kind of transitioned into that um, mentor and helps me on the business side as well. So I lean on him a lot. He's like a big brother to me, and so um, I'd say he keeps my head on straight and, and keeps me motivated. Well, Brandon is a great kid, too, and he's he's an example. We've talked a lot on Walter Funfilter to, to young racers. Corey LaJoy comes to mind uh, right off the top, who was was at that place in his career where he, he didn't have anything really to drive, and was he going to keep driving uh, whatever he could get behind the wheel of, or was he going to go get a job as a, a crew chief or, or engineer or just working in the shop because he, he had done all those things to – as a kid growing up working for his dad and Corey said there was that mo- there was that one moment where, where he said I'm not quitting I, I, I was considering getting a real job but I am not giving up and I know those those decisions and that determination is what makes champions when you're faced with with times like these I don't know if you ever read about it but I lost a few races before I finally won one but I, I certainly started race number 462, I started it knowing I was going to win it. You know, I didn't think I wouldn't win. I'm going to win. And I think that's the attitude that that helped me 
survive all those years. And, and I'm, I'm really, I think it's really cool to hear you say that, that, you know, that's where you are right now. You're like, we're going to do this, Mm -hmm. damn it. And I, I appreciate that. Yeah. I think just trying to work hard and learn as much as you can anytime, whether it be, like you said, going to the wind tunnel, going to pit practice. I'm, I'm just trying to do everything I can. And, and Brandon's reminding me of that is, um, really a lot last year when we were in the playoffs and um, it was obviously easy to get distracted as a, a young 20-year-old guy and um, whether it be doing one more rep at the gym or watching one more race from the past, he just kept on reminding me, um, don't don't take the checker flag at Homestead and, and go to bed that night thinking, man, I wish I, I, wish I would have done this and, and just don't have anything you can regret. So I'm uh, just trying to do everything I can do and, and do the best job I can do. And if I do the best job I can do, I, I know I can't do any better. So I'll feel satisfied at the end of the day, w- regardless of the results. And and going to Miami to race for a championship, that's that's what it's all about. And uh, Brett certainly had a great performance down there, but, but you, you had a shot at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were, we, were, we were pretty good that day. We just, uh, just didn't, I don't know, didn't make – the right adjustments looking back at it after the race and um i wish i maybe could have changed the adjustments that we made but you don't know when you're in the moment you know so um i felt like i was fully prepared for that race i mean brett and i raced our tails off for the last i don't know probably from the middle of the race to seven eighths other way through the race and then um he kind of walked away with it, but we, but we were racing hard, and um, I was leading laps, and he'd lead laps, and then i go back to the lead, and it's like us two were dicing it out the whole race for the lead and for the championship. So um, I don't know. It's a bummer that, that we didn't get it, but um, I feel like everything happens for a reason, so it's just more fuel for the fire to go out there and, and do a better job next time. That's awesome, and I know uh, part of your – world is i racing i actually called an i race you were in yep. one one night which i i didn't know all that was going on around me I, I understand and see how intense it is now and and i tell kids all the time you know when when you get to a racetrack like miami if you've never driven there before when, when you do i racing at least everything looks familiar to yeah, you yeah you can get your visuals and yeah, and so you use that to help you be a better racer, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I kind of just use it. Obviously, you're not going to get the, the full extent of what racing is. You don't get the G-forces and all that. Um, but to a certain, a certain extent, you can you can get a pretty good idea. It's, I'd say it's the closest thing to real life um, racing. And so I use it quite a bit and uh, really more so for, for the visuals of the racetrack and, and learning all that and then, just for repetition, maybe if I want to try and just do crossover moves, no matter what it is, I can I can always learn something from it. So just that repetition of making laps and always adapting to something, it, it definitely helps for the real race car. Now, did you go to high school with Riley Herbst? Yeah, we were uh, we were both in high in the same high school. We've been really good friends since we were third or fourth grade, and then uh, lived in the same neighborhood. Would ride bikes every day, be jumping our bikes or riding our little 50cc dirt bikes or whatnot, just be terrorizing the neighborhood yeah. and hanging out. So I've been good friends with him since then. And you grew up in Las Vegas and yep. and um, GMS Racing, their, mm-hmm. their, their owner, uh, Maury Gagler and Stencer, they're from Las Vegas. Were you ever – did you ever know those guys? I, I did not know them. I uh, When I was racing in the truck series my first year – no, maybe – no, it was the K&N series in 2016. My second year at K&N – um, right before I, I made the jump up to the trucks, I the first time I met Maury was I was working out. My same personal trainer there was Maury's trainer, Spencer's dad's trainer. And so um, I'd always see him a little bit here and there and say hello to him every time. But I that's really the most of, of what I knew of them. And Zane Smith, how does he fit into all this? I so know he's we, my uh, friends too. So Z- Riley, his family has an off-road racing team out in California trophy truck racing and Zane's dad is the the head crew chief over there he runs the whole Herb Smith uh, fabrication and, and racing team and so um, that's where Zane comes in and Zane and Riley used to race way back when they were four or five years old in trophy carts and then 
I started racing legend cars out in Las Vegas and, and Bandoleros and, and then Zane raced legend cars and me and Riley started uh, racing the Bandoleros. Then we moved up into legend cars and then we all three joined the same team. Um, and so we've been buddies ever since then. That was 2013. Wow. And so we've, uh, that's when I met Zane was starting racing legend cars. And so we've all been really good friends. Well, um, nothing feels better than beating your friends. That's so right. I hope when y'all line up next time, uh, whether it's at Charlotte or down the road somewhere, when those other guys get an opportunity that, that you, you, you get the best of them. I really appreciate I hope you so. coming These by. last two that we've been in, I, I got at Richmond, I got dumped by Kaz running sixth and then on a restart. And then I had the, the loose wheel running sixth this past one at Dover. Those are the only two races where all, all three of us have been in the same race. So, I don't know if it's a good thing that they're in it or not, but it hasn't been too good. <laughs> but you're getting the best of them. That's right. I know. Hopefully, we'll beat them here soon. That's right. And I, I just was going to say, we uh, Fox producer, Artie Kempner, has an autism awareness mm-hmm. golf tournament up in Dover and raises a lot of money for an awareness for autism. And I noticed you had on your autism awareness bracelet. So thank you for that. And I appreciate all the support that all the NASCAR community gives to causes such as autism awareness yeah it's great what um what Artie does up there and um it was, it was a great event his, his golf uh drive for autism the golf tournament we had a lot of fun as myself and justin allgaier went up there and there's a lot of other drivers but uh it was great just to to see everybody and, and see the kids and help raise some money for them and and hear their story is really really special well again noah i really appreciate you coming by yes sir thanks for taking some time and Enjoy the next uh, six, eight days off before you get behind uh, the wheel and get in the grind of it again. That's right. It's going to be a good time. Right on. Man, it was a lot of fun visiting with Noah Gregson. He was such a fine young man. We talked about winning races, throwing up, kissing girls. We covered it all. And I'm really thankful that he took time to come by here at the Fox Studios and see us. It's been a fun show. Appreciate you tuning in. Remember, rate us. Give us a five-star rating. And also, tell your friends to add us using their favorite podcast app. We're going to be here for you week in and week out, bringing you all the stories from the NASCAR world. Thanks for listening.